Welcome to Windmill Windup Day 2. This is Hardcap. I'm Elliot Trotter here with Brian Jones and Liam Rosen to talk about today's play. We saw quarterfinals and the open semifinals today. So let's start with uh, women's quarters and some of the games that we saw. So what were those matchups, Liam? So the first matchup was Germany's women's national team versus Jakob out of France. Uh, they beat them quite handily, 15-5. Yeah, I was watching that game and Germany was putting on a very strong zone. It was very breezy today for all of the games and this game was no exception. Uh, I think the difference between these two teams is, is Germany was just able to throw a little bit better in the wind and able to convert. You know, they are a solid team and uh, they were doing well yesterday in uh, pool play or uh, Swiss draw format play. And uh, they just had a little bit more uh, composure out there in this wind, which allowed them to, to march to that victory. Uh, the other matchup I saw was Italy Team 1935, which was another one of the, the quarters matchups. And I think this is another case of just more experienced players able to move the disc in the wind. The, the crazy thing about that was Italy was playing, this is the Italian women's national team, was playing with three subs. Really? And and they absolutely handily destroyed them, 15-6. Mm -hmm. So you're right, experience prevailed. Yeah, it seems like here in this tournament so far with this Swiss draw that we went five games in the Swiss draw and then today we went to the quarterfinals and semis. A team playing with three subs, that's pretty miraculous to actually make it through this far. Yeah. I, I, I noticed a trend, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more, uh, that although we had the Swiss draw format, which was supposed to yield some of these early on mismatches, we saw a lot of clean sweeps in the quarters and semis. Teams just being above and beyond the other team they were competing against. So what were the other results in the women's division, just so we, uh, so we know? Sure. So the, the next two was uh, Vima, 15 beating Primavera Holandes, uh, seven. Vima is a team from Finland that we previewed on Sky. Primavera Holandes is a team from the Netherlands. Then the other matchup was Abrikos from Moscow versus Lotus. Lotus beat them 15-6. So let's talk a little bit about the, the mixed division. And the game that I was paying attention to a lot was the Wombats versus the Russian national team. Uh, the Russian national team, I didn't see a lot about, but I was being told uh, by, by Kate, uh, the famous Russian Kate, uh, that that team was killing it. And uh, when I stepped into the stadium to see that quarterfinal, they absolutely were. They were just dominating this Wombats team. Something that they were doing that no other team in this entire tournament, in any division, women's division or open division, is they were being incredibly patient with the disc. They were putting an excellent zone on with in this wind. It seemed like the right de decision for any team. But uh, when the Wombats were putting his own on or, or any sort of D, they were incredibly patient, working it all the way up the field and finding their shots. They, you know, here and there, they would sometimes try something when they got close to the red zone. But in general, they were willing to find their shots. They jumped up to a 3-0 lead, got as far as 6-0 before the team put, in a, put one on the board. And uh, that Russian national team, I would not be surprised to see them make it into the finals and take this tournament. Uh, what were some of the other results from the mixed division? So the other couple of matchups there were uh, Mubi Disc from Spain, which was really, really playing well. This is a, a strong team from the Canary Islands that has picked up a couple of strong players from Barcelona. And they took down Rebel Ultimate, who's a very strong mixed team, number one mixed team in Ireland, 15-10 in a pretty contested match, but they'll be matching up against the Russian national team tomorrow. So that's going to be a very that's interesting a game. Uh, on the other side, the Germany mixed national team just blew out Stockholm Syndrome 15-2. So you have to wonder, is Germany the favorite? I would say maybe, yeah, it seems like they've found their mojo and they're really working together. Huge loss. Uh, maybe they didn't have to work that hard, so be interesting. Uh, they'll be going against the France mixed national team who got beat by the Dutch mixed national team in corners 15-7. So again, that'll be Germany versus France on one side, Russian mix versus movie disc on the other side. Okay. A surprise that wasn't in the bracket was Furious Goats. They were a team that looked strong, but virtue of the Swiss draw, they actually were eliminated ninth place going into the bracket because they weren't able to get enough point differential. And as a result, those points really matter. And we talked about this in our, our day one recap. Point differential is huge. Every point didn't matter because you're fighting for those Swiss draw points. And it, in the end, it bit them. 
So finally, let's talk about the Open Division, and we saw both quarters and semis today. Uh, the quarters game that I had my eye on was the Zeeven Schwaben Italy game. And we were really coming in expecting this to be a tight one. These were both teams that were, were competing quite well. Uh, Bologna has, it's, it's somewhat of a national team, but they also have a lot of stars just from around Italy. Uh, and then Zeeven Schwaben is a team that's made it to the finals in this tournament several times. Uh, I'm not sure if they've won before, but they're a historically strong team. Um, and although it started off with a, with a trade, uh, quickly Bologna got three breaks in a row, going up 3-1. And what was particularly interesting about this game is just the access of pucks. You know, these teams were willing to, to throw to almost nothing just to move the disc down the field. And what seemed to be uh, beneficial for uh, Bologna is just they were able to catch it a little bit better. They were able to throw it through this wind a little bit harder and come down with it more often. Brian, you were watching as well. What did you see? I saw a lot of that too, the Hucks, but really the matchup came into play in the quarterfinals. They had just played in the final round of the Swiss draw. They came in tired, Siebenschwaben that is, came in tired, they were definitely gassed, they had some older players that just couldn't keep up in the end, and they were trying to run a zone, and Philip Haas, the player that's going to be playing for next gen from Siebenschwaben, was trying to do a little bit too much, and he admitted this after the game, and he was trying to poach and trying to do as much as he could, and we saw some other players, as you said, Elliot, trying to force the disc down the field because there didn't seem like there was any options to work it patiently. Yeah, Davide More was a star player for Italy in this game. He seemed to be everywhere around the disc, sometimes to uh, his team's detriment, but he was also the one jacking that disc down the field every single time uh, and able to make uh, a lot of scoring opportunities for his team. It was really impressive. It was really impressive that he was able to just put the disc into the wind all day long, all tournament long, really, and his discs don't really fall down too fast. And it, they sit really nicely, so he was able to throw it, and the receivers were able to run underneath it quite a feet here in this wind today, which was around 20 miles per hour. So what were the other quarters' uh, scores and, and results, Liam? Sure, so on the other side, uh, you had Silence versus Oranje, which is the Dutch Open national team. That was a really interesting game because Oranje actually was down 9-2. to two. They brought it all the way back up 12-13, but weren't able to close it out. Silence scored the last two points and ended up winning 15-12. Uh, Okay. Then the other side we have French Open national team beating Fire of London, one of the top teams in England, 11 to 7. And finally Free Speed, who uh, again we mentioned before as being a very, very strong team from Switzerland, took down Flying Bisque, team from Italy, 15 to 5. So sticking with Free Speed, watching this open semis between Free Speed and Silence, this was a very, very one-sided game. Free Speed put on uh, a couple different zones, but they had this one zone look that, that really trapped the player quite well on the sideline. Uh, sometimes got into a little bit of double and triple teaming that, that just wasn't being called, but uh, Silence just didn't know what to do about it. And Free Speed went up, I think, you know, as far as, as seven before uh, Silence was able to put anything on the board. Yeah, it looked like that they were able to win ugly, and they talked about this captain afterwards. They, they, were just, they were just ready for this game plan. They were ready for this win. They came out with the Hawks. They were able to connect on them, and their philosophy was it. And also, they just had that mental edge. When you're ready to deal with these conditions, you're ready to go. Silence, on the other hand, came out, and they didn't know what to do with their zone. They looked lost. They looked flustered. And, and that's, in the end, Free Speed was able to convert. Yeah. The Swiss team, I think, uh, as you said, they really had the momentum. And there was a, a point early on, Thomas Geisen uh, had an amazing layout save catch for the score that really, I think, put a spark in that team. And you know, they, they didn't look back from that point on. Uh, on the other side, the other semi that we were paying attention to was Italy going up against France. And it started out very, very close. These teams were trading back and forth until about sixes. Uh, and then Italy started to break away using similar tactics to, to what they were using in that quarterfinal game, just willing to, to throw that disc and able to get a better slice of the wind. Uh, Davide playing quite well again, uh, finding his Enza, finding his receivers in the end zone. Yeah, and also we talked about this. It, it, it looked like that the Bologna team was just more athletic than the French team, and they were having some great layout Ds, great layout catches. They, were, they, took, they took those risks, but the receivers were able to bail out the handlers when necessary. 
and, and that's what was the difference in the game. They were able to score up a win, and, and French Open could not. We'll be back tomorrow with coverage of the women's and mixed semifinals, as well as the women's mixed and open finals here at the 2012 Windmill Windup in Amsterdam. I'm Elliot Trotter here with Liam Rosen and Brian Jones. Thanks for watching. Dot scenes.